Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nordica and I'm hopeful that this will be the last video, fingers crossed, on this Marantz M7C. If you watched the last part of this series of videos you will have seen the, the recalcitrance of this particular unit. Received some uh, helpful comments on the last video just to give me things to think about, just to retract my work and just to double check and make sure that I was happy with the grounding system of this unit and I am happy with it. I've done some extensive testing on it uh, with a proper amplifier and real speakers since the last video. So really the only thing that I've done with the grounding is I've just fitted this extra um, ground strap here to make sure that this aluminium plate is properly grounded to the chassis um, but the grounding system effectively the circuit board functions as the star so I've reviewed the way it's grounded according to the schematics and how this circuit board is actually laid out and so I believe that what I have here is what is intended and uh, my intention is not to redesign this kit in my mind the whole point of this exercise was always to build the kit as intended could it be improved on probably but that's beyond the scope of this exercise so i am still waiting for the crimps to be able to do the ribbon cable for the input selector i talked about that on the last video the housings showed up finally but the crimps are still not here but anyway there's a couple of other things that i can keep moving on with so one of the things I mentioned earlier was that the heater voltage was a bit low. Uh, I also mentioned that some of the um, component values didn't seem to match exactly what was in the documentation and or there were variations between the schematics and the bill of materials. So if we have a look at the schematic for this LT1085, uh, linear voltage regulator this makes the 12.6 volts for the heaters this uh, resistor divider here which goes to the adjust pin it sets what the output voltage will be so the resistor that was actually supplied in the kit is this one and it is 120 ohms so i found the data sheet for this lt1085 and with R24 as 910, um, I think it's actually 909 ohms is the one that's been supplied. And this resistor is 120 ohms, yeah, you get about 10.3 volts or something like that, which is uh, what I was getting. So ran the calculations again for uh, 100 ohms and 910 or 909, and yeah, you get 12.6 volts as what the output should be. So I need to change this resistor to a um, 100 ohm resistor. Now, uh, in the process of getting it out, it was a lot harder to get it out than I thought it would be. I just, even with the wick, I could not get all of the solder out of the hole. So in the process of getting that resistor out, unfortunately, I burnt one of these Weimar mkp 10s so that needs to be replaced as well and i couldn't find any locally so that meant that i had to do a mauser order so um so i got four of these three there and the one i just threw away and there it is so i got those and also since i was doing a mauser order anyway i thought that um, i'd actually get a 100 ohm resistor that's in the same series as all of the other resistors, um, these lovely looking Dale, uh, I think they're RN60Fs or something like that. Anyway, it doesn't matter what they are. So um, that just means that this will match, even though it doesn't matter for a resistor divider, could have really used anything. But it's just nice, this will match, and I've got this replacement capacitor. So what I'm going to do now is put this in and verify that I get 12.6 volts on the heater voltages. Okay guys, we're back. It's taken me about three and a half weeks to get to this point. It is really frustrating. This project has taken so long 
and um, the reason it took so long this time is because there's been a real problem with supply of those JST crimps that I needed to make up the harness for the input selector. Uh, in the end I had to get them from somewhere else um, but I have finally got it made up and I think that this thing apart from the lid going on is now finished. So anyway the first thing I just want to show you is the last thing we talked about I needed to change the resistor over R22 to get the correct uh, DC heater volts so I'm just going to show you now that that has been done so if we just have a look over here 12.6 volts which is pretty much exactly what it's meant to be so you recall I know that I had to replace the resistor and also I replaced um, this capacitor which you can't see hiding behind there which I burnt so I have 12.6 volts and now I'll just give you an overview as to what I've done with this thing okay so I have made up the harness for the input selector so that is now working I also had to hook up the power LED so that's over here I shortened these cables from the transformer because I moved things around and I had a broken RCA that I had to replace and I think that's basically about it so yeah everything's kind of hooked up now so if I just plug it in and turn it on We have music. So it is working uh, really nicely. Um, so what I'm going to do now is put the lid on and once again get it hooked up to a decent set of speakers and go from there. Okay guys, here we are doing our final listening test and I wasn't expecting any change in the audio because everything I've done since my last listening test has really been cosmetic or fixing up the input selectors. I am very, very happy with how it sounds. Uh, all of those early on problems I was having, well there were two problems. There was the hum and that was because of the layout that I had primarily. And also because um, it was picking up RF from this wireless microphone, but also from my mobile phone as well, which is what I use as my camera. So every time I went near it um, with the lid off and all these wireless transmitters next to it, uh, it didn't like that, which is not really too surprising, I suppose. So that problem has been resolved and of course it's much better with the lid on as well. So yeah, this thing is, is now working I believe as it should. Um, 
this project did end up being quite a lot longer than I thought that it would be. This kit, as I've mentioned several times, is not really, it doesn't come with a clear set of instructions as to how to build this kit. So I certainly could not recommend this kit for someone who has never built a kit before. I think really to, to get the best out of this kit, you're gonna need extensive kit building experience and you're gonna need good electronics knowledge as well um, because you're probably going to have to be some, do some debugging. So um, I think if you were looking for a kit that you could just build and have it work first go, like this um, ST120 amplifier that you can see above, then this preamp is not it. Um, if you're someone who likes to fiddle around or perhaps even improve things, uh, then this kit might be for you but um, that's a decision that, that you'd need to make. But um, I don't think that I would buy this kit for me, no. I'd be looking for something else. So anyway, thank you so much for coming along with me on this journey. I really hope that you've gotten something out of it. I hope you've got uh, some indications of, as to the joys and the pitfalls that you can run into into a project like this. Please subscribe to my channel. It helps me so much. Give me a like if you enjoyed my video. I love to read your comments and I really look forward to seeing you on the next video and the next project. Bye for now.